because it really helps our uh, self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? You guys leave, we, we become suicidal. Um, so it's like, what? I came here with like 30 people. Now there's three people. Hi, guys. You know, you feel like an asshole. Um, next guy coming to the stage, give it up for Gene. I cannot pronounce his last name, Let's but he, he can Gene. pronounce it. Gene. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank How's everybody doing tonight? Um, I'm a huge car guy. I love cars. Now's not the best time to buy a car, though. But if you miss the wheeling and dealing and the close them and hose them environment of a car dealership, there's another place for you. Have you guys been to a mattress store lately? Oh, yeah. I didn't know this, but I guess you can finance a mattress. How do you sleep at night knowing that your bed's not paid off? So the first thing you see when you walk into a mattress store is the sales guy is in a suit. Why is the mattress salesman in a suit? Shouldn't he be wearing pajamas? I mean, it's just so uncomfortable. A dude in a suit standing over me when I try out a mattress brings back bad memories of a time that this girl's dad stood over me when I tried her mattress. At least that's the excuse that I gave him. I mean, why, why do they feel the need to dress like lawyers? I mean, it looks like you're putting in long hours at the firm. No, dude, you work at the mattress firm. It's not the same thing. But the funniest is, is that the guy in the suit doesn't make any decisions on the price of the mattress. If you want to get the real price of the mattress, he's got to call the regional mattress manager. Yeah, so, I mean, where do they find these guys? Community college recruiting? You know, I could just see this big shot sitting in his little condo with his pre-owned luxury car in the driveway with a Bluetooth cockroach in his ear. Yep, go for Chad. Yep, yep, take $300 off if he buys today. So then the sales guy comes back and he tries to close me. He's like, so what do I have to do to get you in this bed today? I was like, whoa, man, we just met. But you can start by taking off that suit. Suit's not a bad thing, you know, um, there's a time and a place for it. I've discovered the secret to shopping at Victoria's Secret, and that's, I wear the suit. So my goal is just, I, I'm trying not to look creepy. If you've ever been into a Victoria's Secret, you literally, to find anything, you have to dig through the women's underwear drawers. You know what I mean? And the suit, at least, it makes me look like I have money, and creepy with money is so much more acceptable than creepy with no money. <laughs> I know this because when I walk in, all the sales girls run up to me and they're like, oh, what can we help you find? What can we help you find? Uh, and I'll tell them, you know, I'm looking for something for my wife. And they're like, okay, great. What size is your wife? I'm like, hmm. I don't know. She's like a medium sized girl. No, 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 that's not it. There's a number and a letter. I feel like I'm playing. I'm like, I didn't know there was going to be a quiz. But I feel like I'm playing Battleship. I'm going to go with a B34. <laughs> no, that's not it. No. So then the real hard questions come when I, uh, I gather all the stuff. I go to the register, and then they ask me the real hard questions. They're like, how many gift receipts would you like? How many gift receipts would I like? Take a look at all this stuff. This is all wife-sized. How many gift receipts do you think I would like? So just to mess with them, I'll tell them that I'll need one more than the items that I'm buying. So if I have like three bras, they will be like, give me four gift receipts. They're like, why four? It's like, well, in case it doesn't work out with a first same size mistress. So yeah, I'm married. Um, it's going pretty well. But you know what? I, and I don't know this. Maybe it's the same with your relationships. But even when a relationship is going great, women like to do this thing. They like to pressure test the relationship to make sure it's good. They like to roll out spike strips just to see if you're paying attention. Yeah! Yeah, there we go. You've had it. So this is a true story. I wish this was a joke, but it's not. One day we're driving in the car, uh, not that long ago, my wife asks me out of nowhere. We're just having a random conversation. And she goes to me, who would you be with if we weren't together? <laughs> Like now, okay, so ladies, you're welcome. You can try that later tonight. The guys in the room, if you don't know what just happened or you have a room temperature IQ, let me explain it to you. This is a trick question. You cannot answer that question because whatever name you blurt out in the moment of passion can and will be used against you for the rest of your life. So if you say something stupid like, Oh, I've always thought Sarah's been kind of cute. 
Every argument that you will ever have will end with, Why did you go be with Sarah? <laughs> you should have married Sarah. You could be like 80, 90 years old. It's like, hey, you need my pills? <laughs> Maybe Sarah has her pills. <laughs> I told this joke to my wife earlier, and she says to me, Who the fuck is Sarah? <laughs> Give it up for Gene. How do you say your last name, bro? 